Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Craig Yamasaki, and we're standing in front of the Apollo 8000, which was announced on Monday. And this is the only liquid-cooled supercomputer in the world at the moment? There are other liquid-cooled uh, liquid supercomputers, but uh, this is the only safe and reliable liquid-cooled uh, supercomputer, and safe in that we do not bring the water onto the individual servers. Uh, we use liquid to cool the hot, the high uh, heat generating components, um, and we do so with some heat pipe technology, some patented heat pipe technologies to draw the the uh, the heat off of the components onto what we call a thermal bus bar, um, and then uh, that enables the customer to have dry disconnect, what we call. So there's no water on the tray. The customer can pull the servers out and service them, or install them, or upgrade them just like they would any air-cooled uh, server. So clearly the, uh, the liquid cooling is, is a different sort of a aspect to the, the rack-mounted system that you've got here. Yes. But this is a, a very different rack. It's taller. It looks like there's more servers in it than, than a traditional rack would ever have. What, can you kind of go over the, the highlights of, of what's in here? Yes, sure. The uh, Apollo 8000 is designed to reduce the, the CapEx and the OpEx. And, so, and really, it's about the TCO of the, of the offering. We don't want to leave stranded ports. It's, it's extremely important in a scale-out world to not leave stranded ports. And what that means is, if I'm buying a 40 gig or an InfiniBand uh, network, I don't want to have a port that may have cost me thousands of dollars for that one port to be sitting there without a connection to the server or, or adding value into my environment. Uh, so what we do is, we build the rack to the stride of the switches that we're using. And so 144 for the infinity band space and the high performance computing space is the right number. Uh, and so we build the rack to that and um, make sure that you can squeeze as much performance out of that square foot in your data center. Now that we've seen kind of the high level of this, um, talk about, because this isn't entirely liquid cooled though, right? Because I'm seeing some fans here. So what do what, what the fans do? Yeah. So. Uh, it, it actually is liquid cool, but it uses the liquid to move air. So it's extremely expensive to pull uh, liquid off of small resistors that are generating heat or things that are just, they're kind of in the noise of heat generation. So we cool those with air. Um, we use uh, this heat exchanger, this V-shaped blue thing that you see that we're highlighting in blue. Uh, we use that to cool the air um, and then we circulate that air within our rack so we're a closed system. And the reason we do that is we do not want, the, we have to move the air across our components, but we do not want to have the data center move air to cool our air. So we actually close the doors, we seal the system, and when you put in uh, an up to 80 kilowatt rack in your data center, you don't have to add air handlers to move air to our rack. Um, so it eliminates a component in the data center. And when I talked about TCO, some of the TCO things we're doing removing the air handlers from the data center. Okay? When you add 80 kilowatts, and you need multiples of these if you're doing high performance computing, um, you're adding multiple racks of 80 kilowatts. You don't have to add an air handler, right? The, the, the things you're cooling, you can still cool. You bring water in, we enable you to do that. We also bring high voltage AC in. You can eliminate a transformer in your data center. So 480 volts, customers are used to 208 three phase here in the US. Um, and there's a trans, there's power that comes off the line, goes through a series of transformers. That last transformer that sits on the data center floor, you can actually eliminate that. So it's another savings that we bring to the table. In addition, high voltage AC means I'm bringing that copper down to a smaller diameter copper. All right, well, can we step over to the, the side over here and take a look at some of the uh, liquid cooling components? Yes. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about how we achieve the density at the server level. And we talked about uh, the value prop being energy efficiency and performance density. And the way we do the density piece is we actually put two servers on what we call a tray. And in a traditional air-cooled environment, you would not be able to cool this because there's too much heat being generated by each one of these processors that sit under here. Uh, so we put two servers down, we put the networking and we put the storage down here also. Uh, and so you end up with two high-end servers that can run at uh, full turbo state uh, and, and essentially is 
um, four servers and one rack unit uh, for those in the IT world. Um, again, we talked about energy efficiency. We brought high voltage DC to the trays, which is 380 volts DC. Um, we do a DC, DC to DC step down, and then we provide 380 volts to 12 volts within the uh, server trays itself. So um, there's not an issue with uh, getting the power to it. The issue is getting the cooling off when you have that kind of when you have that kind of performance. And the way we do the cooling, if we use our patented uh, heat sink technology to draw the heat off of the processors, which sit right here. So that would sit on top. Um, we draw the heat off of the processors, which are in the neighborhood of 145 watts going forward. Um, and then the dims are the other uh, big heat generating source within the trays. And these dims have a clamshell technology that draws their heat up. That heat then uh, is drawn through some more heat pipes to our, our, our heat plate. And then transfer to this heat pipe to the side. Now, that's a lot of energy being drawn off of a server. And the way that server uh, gets rid of that heat is we have a thermal bus bar where the warm water comes in. Uh, and I'll stress warm water because we can keep the, the processors well below their T-case max temperature uh, and cool them and also save energy in the data center. So we'll take the uh, warm water coming in, um, we'll use that to draw the heat off of the processors, we'll keep the thermal bus bar, we'll regulate the water through the thermal bus bar to make sure that uh, we can drive hot water out for reuse. Um, and we do so at a below atmospheric pressure. And below atmospheric pressure means that if I get a leak, I'm drawing air into the system versus spraying water out of the system. All right, so we're back over here in, in front of the Apollo 8000, and I thought one of the things that would be interesting to close with is kind of the comparison of the traditional heat sink with the heat sink that was designed for the Apollo 8000. You've got two rods here. Yes. Um, and which, which one is which so that... Uh, this is a traditional copper heat sink that draws energy using uh, just your, your physics of, uh, of metal. And this is a... Um, uh, uh, the heat sink that we're using in, in the uh, Apollo systems, and it's a heat pipe, and inside there, there's a couple drops of uh, an alcohol-based type of solution that turns into a vapor, goes from a liquid to a vapor when it hits a hot surface, and you can feel the difference when you hold the two into this hot water, which, you know, you can drink it if you wish, but uh, you can tip, feel how fast that, that conduction happens if you grab the top, and you hold the, uh, you can hold the, the, the two, the heat pipe, and you can feel how quickly that heat moves up in there. It's turning into a gas, it's transferring the heat up that pipe. And, and while obviously you can't sense the heat uh, on the video, um, I'm, I could feel in these two that the, uh, the silver colored rod is already warm on my fingers and the copper rod is, is still cool. Takes a lot longer, yes, yes. Uh, energy efficient is, is also about moving that heat quickly out of the system and it's generated constantly with those those hot Xeon processors, so we want to make sure we can keep that system cool and do so efficiently.